good to see all of you this morning. Thank God that things are as well with us as it is. Amen. I tell you, when we look at the devastation that's going throughout uh, our state, it really makes you get to thinking. Amen. Probably the first thing hits our mind is that it could have been me. Amen. To understand and to realize, amen, just how blessed we are. Amen. God continue to watch over us and keep us. And uh, I also think about that uh, uh, it, it could be worse. Amen. I think I was thinking in terms that if that tornado had hit in a more populated area, and you know, it, it, it would just, it just blew my mind that you know that twenty some people lost their lives, and uh, had it been in a heavily populated area, it certainly could have been much worse. Uh, so many times when we uh, are really devastated over the news, we, if we look deep enough, we can see a blessing. Amen. And uh, it's just surprising that the way things are, that uh, it could be uh, stormy today and sunshine in the morning. Uh, sunshine in the morning and storming uh, at night. And I said to the wife who was driving down the road, I said, I, the, the probably the frightening thing and the devastating thing is that uh, when you see danger coming, you can sort of make preparation or sort of brace yourself. I said, but in the nighttime, and you can't see what's coming. Amen. You're so vulnerable. Amen. But whether it's night or whether it's day, this is the day that the Lord has made. And we're going to go and rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. You're in the hand of our ministry of music. you're going through this morning or whatever you've been through let you know God is with us oh let me say say come
faint not, and neither be weary. But there is, there, there is no searching of his understanding. Isaiah, the 40th chapter, is the 28th verse. He gave power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases his strength. Isaiah, the 40th chapter, the 29th verse. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall ultimately fall. Isaiah, 40th chapter, 30th verse. Remember ye not the former thing, neither consider things of old, Isaiah, before the third chapter, 18 verse.
inside, please stand and obey us from back.
glorification on our lips. Hearts signifying the same. And we praise you and we glorify your holy name. You're worthy of all the praise and of all the glory. Father, we lift those in the Roland Park and Civil City communities asking Lord if you would just move on their behalf. I know that you've already done it. So I need to just come and say thank you. Someone just uttered and said that you ride on every storm. And I want to say thank you, Lord, for how you move and how you have your being and manifest yourself. Thank you for your protective mercy. Watches over us all night and all day. Lord, we thank you. Lord, come now and administer them whatever the need may be. Your word teaches us that you will supply our every need. And they do stand in need of thee. Father, there are some hearts that's hurting. Not only just the loss of possessions, but the loss of loved ones. Homes can be replaced. But a life, we'll see it over on the other side. Comfort ye. Comfort ye, Lord. Like no one else can. Those big loving arms, would you just color them today? Touch the minds and the hearts and give them a sense that all is going to be all right. We love you, Lord. Holy Ghost, come now. We need you in the reins of our service. Take my mind, my heart, my understanding. Not only me, but the hearers of your word. And it will resonate in our lives and in our hearing. And we may be able to accept Jesus the Christ as our personal Savior. Thank you, Jesus, that you came humbly and died, that we may have the right to be filled with life. When it's all over, yours to call. And our time to answer. Give us a home in your kingdom. Father, it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
even those who woke up in the middle of the night on Friday night. They woke up Saturday morning to brand new mercy. Look with us, if you will, to the Gospel of John. John chapter 11, verses 45 through the 52nd verse. John chapter 11, verse 45 through the 52nd verse. There you find these words. Then many of the Jews which come to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did believed in him. But some of them went their way to the Pharisees and told them what thing Jesus had done. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said, what do we? For this man doeth many miracles. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him. And the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. And one of them, named Caiaphas, being high priest that same year, said unto them, Ye know not at all. Nor considers that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people and that the whole nation perish not. And this spake he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. And not for the nation only, but that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. Amen. Amen. I want to try and reason with us on the day from a thought. It's better that one man should die for the people than for the whole nation to perish. Oh, bless his holy name. Thank God for Jesus. Amen. I believe you can agree with me that mama can't die for you. Daddy can't take your place. Amen. The only someone that can take your place and the only someone that has taken your place already is Jesus the Christ. Mm -hmm. You can remember a couple of Sundays ago we shared with you that it was Passover time. Mm -hmm. It was Lent season. And Jesus was leaving Galilee on his way to Jerusalem. It's just awesome when God lived out his word. All through the Old Testament, the Jewish nation always celebrated Passover. Yeah. Uh -huh. During Passover, they always had to have a sacrificial lamb. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And here, the sacrificial lamb of the world is coming to give his life 
for mankind. Yeah. Oh, bless his holy yeah. name. Yeah. Amen. It's one thing to read about something, but another thing to live it. As Jesus left Galilee, he came nearby at the river of Jordan and traveled all the way down some 70 some miles to a place called Bethany. We know as we talked on it a bit the other day, he was at some friend's home. He's in Bethany now. They were wondering if Jesus was going to show up. Now, I want to tell you, if I knew that death was in force, yeah. I don't know whether I would show up or not. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. But Jesus, the humble Lamb of God, yeah. he has come from Galilee and he is near Jerusalem. Uh -huh. He's in Bethany uh -huh. with his friends. Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Uh -huh. Oh, bless his holy name. Will he show up? Yeah. Yes, he will. Uh -huh. Amen. Destiny is on his life. Yeah. So my brothers and sisters, we know that during the time and the season of Passover, that many had left their homes and gone to Jerusalem. And they were going there many times, weeks before the Passover, in order to clean themselves up and get themselves ready for the Passover. Amen. They went there to purify themselves. People were from every corner, nick and corner of the world. They had gone to Jerusalem getting ready for the Passover. And I know my brothers and sisters is even in your mind now. You call yourself getting ready for Easter. I wonder if you were going to talk about that. But most of us, our concern is about what flock I'm going to wear. What kind of Easter basket is it going to be? But it's not about any Easter basket. It's not about no kind of flock that you may get. You ought to be trying to get close to the Lord for him to clean us up. I don't know about you. I, I got some stuff that needs to be cleaned up. And I tried to wash it away myself. But I want to tell you, the only hope that I have is in Jesus Christ. One thing about it, I don't have to worry about will he show up. Amen. He, 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 he's coming. He, he's going to show up. I wonder do you know what I'm talking about. So here we are. He's in Bethany. He's not at Jerusalem at this time. Yeah. But if the Lord keeps my mind, uh -huh. amen, hopefully next Sunday, well, we're going to get into Jerusalem. Right. Amen. You remember that triumphant interest yeah, yeah. that he made into Jerusalem? Yeah. Hopefully if the Lord keep my mind, yeah. that next Sunday, since he's at Bethany, let's take him to Jerusalem. Amen. And then, then, then not only take him to Jerusalem, but we want to kill him. Amen. Not only do we want to kill him, but we want to get him up on Sunday morning. So here we are. We're in Bethany. Here at verse 46 and 47, we find that we have a problem. The many and the song. Yeah. Amen. You read that text. It talks about there were many, uh -huh. but there were some. Uh -huh. I don't care how good people or what good things that a person may do. Preaching, preaching. There's always some 
on. It's there to tear down whatever you fix up. Sadly, many believe which was the result of Jesus being revealed as the resurrection and the life during the raising of Lazarus. People had just seen a man was buried. Had been dead for four days. Seen a man being raised from the tomb. And as covered in verse 4 of the chapter, the reason for this miracle happening. John eleven four 4 says, but when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not, does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God. So that the Son of Man may be glorified there. Uh -huh. Oh, bless his holy name. Jesus do something just to get him some glory. Sometimes some stuff get rough in your life. But Jesus is just trying to get some glory. He's just trying to wake you up. <laughs> And make you realize that I am the way, the proof and the life. But some, instead of believing and giving Jesus glory, went to the Pharisees. Again, this highlighted that not everyone comes to faith. But he gave his life for all of us. Sinners as well as those who know the Lord. I want to tell you, while I was yet a sinner, wasn't fit to live, nor was I fit to die. Jesus gave his life for me. Even when seeing something like a man being raised from the grave, after four days, if that don't make you believe, oh, what will Cause you believe. So the word says some went to the Pharisee. The Pharisee was a religious group of Jewish. During the last second temple being erected somewhere around 100 BC up until 70 AD. The Pharisees were known mostly for their uh, observance of the law but was also a political group I want to tell you my brothers and sisters yes we need government but I want to tell you look like government fights more so than we on the streets I wonder do you know what I'm talking about but they find themselves just like yeah, the Pharisees and Caiaphas. Yeah, they didn't want someone to come take their position. I wonder, do you know what I'm talking about? People now is seeking for power and glory. Yeah, they dedicate themselves to ritual purity. They talk holiness. But they live everything except holiness. Yeah, but was they were immoral due to their needs to remain in position. Yes, and they really just refused to accept Jesus as the Messiah. Remember, this is the season of Lent. Everyone has gone to Jerusalem for a period of purification. Yeah, for preparing themselves for the Passover. So I've been talking about this three or four weeks. And I just got a question for you. Are you ready? Are you cleaned up enough for Jesus to come? I wonder, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, by now, 
is just a few days before the Passover. Amen. Amen. Have you used you some fuller soap to try to clean yourself up? Yeah, they were outwardly religious, but inwardly they were corrupt. Yeah, which Jesus addresses, yes, in the word in Matthew 23, 26, and 28. Yeah, they did all the right things for the wrong reasons. I wonder, do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, Pilgrim Ress, I don't want you to just come to church because it's right to come to church. But you ought to come to church to worship, praise, and to glorify the Lord. And I, I dare you to lift him up. For the word says, and I, if I be lifted up, I'll go I wonder do you know what I'm talking about. I ain't got no room to talk about you. And, and, and believe it or not, you don't have any room to talk about me. Ain't God good? 26 says, yeah, thou blind Pharisee, clean first that which is within the cup and the platter. That the outward of them uh, may be clean also. What good do it do for me to clean the cup that I drink from on the outside and filterness is on the inside? 27 says, woe unto you, you scribes and Pharisees, said you are a hypocrite. <laughs> For ye are like a whitewashed sepulcher, which indeed appear beautiful on the outward side. But are within you are full of dead men's bones. Ain't the Lord all right today? 28 says, even so ye also outwardly appear as righteous men. But within you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Yeah, yeah. Ain't the Lord all right today? Yeah. Yes, let's clean up so the Lord can use us. Yeah. There are always, yeah, my brothers and sisters, uh, they were always plotting to arrest Jesus. Yeah. Ain't the Lord all right today? Yeah. He, he haven't even made it to Jerusalem. But uh, he's already under arrest. Ain't the Lord all right today? So going to them about what Jesus had done, yes, was not so that they could testify. Ain't the Lord all right today? Yeah, they went to Jesus to carry them some news. Yeah, he's not in the Jerusalem, but he's over at Bethany. I, I'm told that he's on his way. So you need to get ready because he's coming. And I need to remind you, he's sort of crafty. Yeah, you think he's here and when you know one thing, he's gone. Yeah. But rather, it was getting uh, them uh, to do something about Jesus and what he had done. Their reaction uh, again proved their denial. Yet not for, yet the miracle that Jesus did. Yeah. But for his claim, uh, yeah, to be the son of God. Yeah, his miracle, uh, yeah, were good. Yeah, but that wasn't the reason why they arrested. Yeah, he said that he was the promised Messiah. 
say to the Lord, all right today. Yeah, yeah the result uh, of going uh, uh, to the Pharisee. Yeah, this created the problem. Verse 47 says, so the chief priest uh, and Pharisees gathered a council and said, yeah, what are we going to do? For this man uh, performs many miracles. Yes, yeah, and we cannot deny it. The chief priest was in charge of the temple worship in Jerusalem. Nowadays, folks would rather go anywhere but the church. And the reason is that it's enough confusion in the church that will run you out of the church. Ain't it all alright? And if anywhere look like we ought to be on one accord, look like it ought to be in God's house. Ain't it alright today? Yes, and they followed of themselves as the leaders representing the Jewish people. As the Pharisees uh, who was expert in the law and the chief priest, uh, they was in charge of temple worship. Yeah, yeah they called uh, a business meeting. Uh, ain't the Lord all right? Uh, we have need to discuss what's going on. Yeah, now mind you, uh, these are the very ones who should have been calling people to come to Christ. But here they are uh, trying to separate people and keep them from coming to Christ. Yet my brothers and sisters, uh, here they were uh, determining uh, what are we going to do. Ain't the Lord good today? Yeah, the basic reason for unbelief and opposition is selfish fear. Selfish fear. My brothers and sisters causes us to lose some stuff. It causes a man to reject other folks. Three things in particular and we are gonna try to close the message. There was fear of losing their esteem, recognition and their followers. But there was fear of losing their their position, uh, their influence, uh, and their authority. Uh, they did not uh, want to lose uh, the little power uh, that they thought they had. Uh, uh, didn't want to lose their place. Uh, they would have uh, lost uh, every man. His job, his profession, his security, his wealth, and his power. It's the Lord alright, but my God is bigger than my position. He's more than my money. He's my doctor. In my sick room, uh, he's my church. Uh, in my courtroom, uh, ain't it alright? Uh, have you fired him? Uh, ain't he alright? Uh, he's my way uh, out of no way. Uh, that was fear of losing the nation. Uh, therefore, uh, the problem. If Jesus keep on doing these miracles, everybody is going to believe in her. Good God Almighty, I want to tell you, he may not know what he was saying, but he's absolutely correct. I don't know how you feel about it, but I came to Jesus just as I was. I was real.
Will you come? If you come as a candle, Lord, I tell you. Oh, uh-huh. 